During the 1930s and moving toward the 1940s and beyond, the border areas of rural Mississippi and Tennessee were awash with the criminal element. A tightly entrenched collective of marauders known as the State Line Mob had their hand in everything from moonshining and gambling rackets to prostitution and murder. Living in these areas, one would be wise to avoid crossing paths with those in the mob, because if you were foolish to do so, you would disappear off the face of the earth, your bones scattered across the land, never to be spoken of ever again. But that would all be put to a stop. A proverbial monkey wrench thrown into the mob spinning cog. That monkey wrench had a name, and his name was Buford Pusser. Buford was born December 12, 1937 in Adamsville, Tennessee, the son of Helen and Carl Pusser, who was the chief of police in Adamsville. And growing up as the police chief's son, Carl set out to instill a sense of law-abiding discipline in his son's life. Buford was a standout high school athlete, standing at 6 foot 6 inches. Buford was an imposing figure on the football field. After graduating high school, Buford enlisted in the United States Marine Corps, However, his military career would be short-lived as he was given a medical discharge due to asthma. In 1957, Buford moved to Chicago to give pro wrestling a try. In the local wrestling association, he was known as Buford the Bull. Later on, he met a lovely young woman named Pauline Mullins, and they would go on to get married on December 5th of 1959. Pusser and his wife decided to return to Adamsville in 1962 so that Buford could follow in his father's footsteps in law enforcement. He was Adamsville's police chief and constable from 1962 through 1964. And after incumbent Sheriff James Dickey was killed in a car accident, Pusser was elected sheriff of McNary County, and that is where Buford's one-man war with the state line mob would begin. The mob, having taken quick notice of his no-nonsense policy of being unable to be bribed and a large number of their illegal moonshine stills being destroyed by Buford himself, they quickly put a contract on his life. Pusser survived several attempts on his life. On February 1, 1966, as Puster was investigating a robbery at a local motel, Louise Hathcock attempted to shoot and kill the lawman and fired upon him with a 38 caliber revolver. Pusser returned fire, killing the woman, sending her off into her eternal slumber. There would also be another attempt to silence Pusser. An unidentified man shot Pusser three times and fled the area. Once again, Buford escaped Depp's clutches, but on August 12, 1967, he would escape yet another attempt, but the woman he loved would not be so lucky. That morning, Pusser received a call of a disturbance, and his wife Pauline decided to ride along. As they passed New Hope Methodist Church, a car came speeding by, pulled out a 30 caliber carbine rifle, and sprayed the occupants of the patrol car, killing Pauline Pusser and striking the sheriff three times in the face. The shooting, taking away his only love and disfiguring him in the process. He would need several reconstructive surgeries to make an effort of restoring his appearance. Pusser long suspected Kirksey McCord Nix Jr. of being the man who hired the persons responsible for killing his wife, but were never able to bring him to justice. Pusser ran for sheriff again in 1972, but lost to incumbent Clifford Coleman. On August 21st, 1974, Buford Pusser was leaving a meeting with a production company, which he was in talks with on portraying himself in the sequel to Walking Tall. He left in his Corvette, driving at a high rate of speed. As he roared down the highway, he lost control of his car and crashed into an embankment. His daughter, witnessing the crash, had pulled up to where her father had been ejected from the vehicle. Buford Pusser died at the scene. Many speculated that somehow Pusser's vehicle was sabotaged, but later Paul Irvin, the state trooper who worked the crime scene, confirmed that the death was caused by drinking and driving and driving at excessive speeds. The lawman, Buford Pusser, was dead at the age of 36. This is the Buford Pusser uh, Museum here. 
And I wanted to stop by really quickly because I read online that the car that he was driving at the time of his crash uh, is here. Now I know they don't let video inside, but of course Lamont never really listened as a child and as a 42 year old man, I still continue to not listen. So we're gonna go inside. I'll try to be really quick and as sneaky as possible, but uh, let's go inside. Let's go take a look at that car. Everything in this house has remained the same. The furniture, uh, the carpet, of course, this would be the kitchen area. Looks like his uh, toy slingshot from when he was a kid. This is the actual 1974 Corvette that Buford Pusser was driving when he died and they have not done anything to it. They brought it here from the crash scene and uh, yeah, he was ejected right from up top, the T-top right there, his body came out right there and landed in a field adjacent. And as you can see those wires around the Wheels right there, that's the uh, steel belting from the tires. And if you can see that other car right there, that's a 19, I believe she said a 1974 uh, Lincoln Continental. He bought this car from the money that he made from the movie, from them, you know, him giving him a story or whatever. And uh, he was quite proud of this car, but unfortunately he did not get uh, much of a chance to uh, drive around in it. Yeah, quite amazing. You got some personal effects that was in his wallet from the car accident. Of course, that was an actual $100 bill that he had at the time, now remember, he was ejected from the car, so that's why none of this was set on fire. And uh, those shoes he was wearing when he died. And of course, uh, that is a picture of the car, what it looked like before the accident. This is the highway. We're on August 21st, 1974. Buford Pusser was driving in his red Corvette when he crashed into this embankment right here. Of course, there's a memorial right there that was built in his honor. And at the time, uh, his daughter was following him. And when she rounded that corner, she seen the car was on fire. And immediately she stopped and ran and she seen her dad who had been thrown out of the car just barely alive. I don't think she said that he said anything coherent because he was just kind of mumbling. And right after that, he died within moments. And this is our final stop. This is the Adamsville Cemetery. And right there is the final resting place of Sheriff Buford Pusser. And he, of course, is buried alongside of his wife, Pauline. That is her right there. And, uh, this is his stone right here. So he would be lying right here and she would be right here. And this is his monument.
Now, somebody did tell me that his monument was exactly as tall as he was, which is six foot six. And, you know, considering it's sunken in a little bit, that's about how tall he was. He was probably taller than that because I'm sure this has settled throughout the years. He walked tall. A uh, remarkable story by a, uh, you know, remarkable man that he probably wouldn't even say he was too remarkable. He was just doing his job. And, you know, it's easy to, you know, take this job in who's ever in who's ever pocket. You just kind of join the collection and wait for the yellow envelope full of hundred dollar bills to come your way once a month. But this guy was not about that. This guy was a lawman, straight and true. And if he would have lived, you know, you could imagine he would have been around during the time of the internet. He could have had his own TV show or uh, whatever, what have you. But uh, I do uh, commend this man for standing up for what he believed in. Uh, a sad ending for him and his wife. Okay, rest in peace to both. Buford and Pauline. Okay. I am Lamont at large. I'm out of here. Before I leave, big shout out to, I believe you said your name was Orange Theory. I seen you uh, delivering, or you seen me as you were delivering uh, the uh, propane. And you stopped by the side of the road to say hello to me. So big shout out to him out there. Uh, it was a pleasure to meet you, and uh, I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that ended well. <laughs> and uh, good luck with uh, getting your license. Of course, we're talking about a CDL. Anyways, uh, live and not live, still alive by the grace of God. I am Lamont at large. I will see you guys on the next video. And uh, one last thing: this is only from what I've heard. If you go and you want to watch that movie, Walking Tall, you might want to watch the original one from what I've heard. It's better than the remake starring Dwayne Johnson. I'm going to watch the movie later on tonight. It's, I believe, on YouTube. I'll put a link to the description if I do find it. But I was told that it is on YouTube. Hey, no problem with... The Rock, I just heard that, you know, the original movie might be a little bit better than yours. That's it. Catch up with you on the next vlog. Peace out.